Hello everyone, hope you are all doing well. As we are doing Indian Polity series, in this video we are going to discuss about the Indian President. This chapter was given as chapter number 17 in Indian Polity by Lakshmi Kant book which we are going to follow as a main source book along with the Indian Constitution itself. Friends, the link for the PDF revision notes is given in the description and comment section as well. These PDF revision notes will help you to revise these lectures faster. And friends, please make the best use of the time you are investing here. Have the source book with you for reference and also maintain running notes if necessary. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and leave a small comment which helps us to reach more, uh, more number of people. Now let's begin our chapter. Friends, before beginning our chapter, we need to have an idea about the structure of Indian Constitution. I have made a detailed video about the structure of Indian Constitution. The link has been given in the icards and also in the description. You can watch that later. For the purpose of this lecture, I would like to briefly give the structure of Indian Constitution. Friends, the Indian Constitution has 468 articles as of now. This number can vary because the parliament can remove some articles or can add some articles by making amendments. So this number can vary. As of now, there are 468 articles and these 468 articles are distributed among 25 parts. That means each part has certain number of articles and each part deals with a particular area. In that way, part 5 of the Indian Constitution constitution has articles numbering from 52 to 151 and this part 5 of the Indian constitution deals with the union executive. Friends, I am repeating again, part 5 of the Indian constitution has articles numbering from 52 to 151 and this part 5 of the Indian constitution deals with the union executive. Now friends, what is meant by union executive? Friends, we all know that there are three branches of government, one is legislature, other one is the executive and the third one is the judiciary. Legislature, they make the laws, executive, they implement the laws that are made by the legislature and judiciary, uh, they interpret the laws and they solve any disputes that arise between the legislature and the executive. And now what is meant by union executive? Union executive means the executive body at the union level or the executive body at the central level. We have central government and also state governments, right? So the executive body of the central government is known as the union executive. And the constitution says that the union executive consists of the president, the vice president, the prime minister, the council of ministers and the attorney general of India. So all these five people are together called as the union executive. And in this chapter, we are going to discuss about the Indian president. The constitution of India says that there shall be a president of India. Friends, we all know that we have a parliamentary form of government where the prime minister is the head of the government. But nominally, the president is the head of the government. The constitution has entitled the president certain roles, responsibilities and privileges. Now, let us see what are those. The constitution of India says that the president is the head of the state. When we say he is the head of the state, we need to remember that he is only the nominal head of the state. The real head is the prime minister minister but nominally and formally the president is the head of the state every executive action has to be taken only under the name of the president for an act to be passed or for a law to be passed the president's assent is uh, necessary without the president's assent it cannot be passed of course the uh, the executive's decision is binding on the president. We will learn about that later. But nominally and formally, the president is the head of the state. And friends, the constitution of India says that the president is the first citizen of the country. He is the symbol of the nation. He represents the nation in international forum. So definitely he has to be the first citizen of the nation. And the constitution says that the president is the supreme commander of the armed forces. When we say he is the supreme commander, again we need to keep in mind that is he, that he is only the nominal supreme commander. All the powers are vested in the hands of prime minister. And the president is the office of the ceremony. Every official national ceremony is held only under the name of the president because he is the symbol of the country and he represents the nation. 
information so friends these are the uh, titles or the responsibilities the roles the privileges that constitution has put upon the president